Okay, welcome back Physics 30s to our next lesson. This is 2.9 and today we're going to be looking at Millikan's oil drop experiment. Now you may remember back from Science 10 that the development of what the atom looked like involved lots of scientists and JJ Thompson was one of those scientists who figured out that there's charges in atoms. And you may remember that his model was called the raisin bun model. So I have a picture of a raisin bun here. He thought that if this is what atoms looked like, like the bun, that there is these negative electrons stuck into this positive sphere, and this was the electrons. Now, he knew that there was electrons, and we had a lot of uh, further research determining what the electrons look like, but at this point, we knew there was electrons, but we wanted to figure out how much charge there was on an electron. So how this was determined was with Robert Millikan's oil drop experiment. So first, he has this atomizer, which is something that's gonna spray these very fine oil droplets. So he sprays it into this chamber and it may kind of look like a mist, but it's made up of all of these really tiny oil droplets. And below that chamber, we can see there's this small hole and some of the droplets are going to fall through there. And when the oil was sprayed, some of the oil droplets hit past one another and there was some charging by friction. I've also seen some cases where you could use x-rays to ionize it, but both should develop some charge. So there's going to be some plus and some minus. Let's focus right now on the negatively charged ones. What he did was then he hooked up a battery kind of of sorts, a voltage towards these two plates, similar to the charge plates we talked about before. And this is going to make an electric field between those plates. And you could flip the direction, but let's say that we have the negatives on the bottom and the positives on the top. So then if we have negative oil droplets, they're going to be repelled from the bottom and attracted to the top. So there's gonna be this upward electric force acting on those oil droplets. Now, if we focus in on that chamber in the oil droplet, there's also gravity pulling the droplet down. So we have two forces going on, gravity pulling down and the electric force pushing up. Now, if we have it like this case where the electric force is weaker than the gravitational force, then the whole oil droplet will fall down. But in this experiment, we're able to change the voltage and change the electric force. So over on the side here, say it's falling, but now I'm gonna crank up the voltage, start turning it up, that's gonna make it so there's a stronger electric force. If the electric force is greater than the gravitational force, then the droplet is going to rise up. So in the experiment, you'd be playing back and forth with that dial, we turn it a little bit back until the gravitational force and the electric force are gonna be exactly equal. At this point, it's either gonna move at a constant velocity, if it had initial velocity, or it's gonna just sit there and it's gonna be levitating. And so if the oil drop is sitting there suspended in the air, we know that the electric force and the gravitational force are the same. Our equation for electric force is going to be Q times the field strength or the charge of that drop times by the field strength, and the gravity is mg. So we can rearrange this to q is equal to mg divided by the field strength. We can figure out the mass of the drop, gravitational field strength, or 9.81, and then the electric field strength based off the voltage and the separation of those plates, like we saw before, we should be able to figure out q. Now when we find q, it's not going to be the same number every time. When those oil droplets hit into each other, sometimes they would transfer one electron, maybe there'd be 10 electrons, maybe 100, maybe 12. You don't know how many electrons are on that droplet. So we're going to get various different numbers like this for the charge on those drops. So how do you figure out the charge of an electron? Well, what you do is you look to find a common multiple of this charge. Say, what is a common multiple that applies to all these values that I got? And once you get that number, that shows you what the charge of the electron would be and how many of them there are on each of those oil droplets. So we find that the common multiple between all of these charges is 1.602177, right? That's it's a pretty specific number, um, and it's not even quite to the full decimals, but that's the common multiple. So what I mean by that is if you take all of these charges and divide by that common multiple, we get the number of electrons or number of that charge that is going to be on each of the oil droplets. So we get the amount of electrons. So that common multiple is the charge on an electron. And if you have five of those electrons, you get this charge, which is what we measured. You have eight of those electrons, you get this charge, which we measured. 3, 11, and so on is that is the common multiple, so we know that must be the smallest amount 
that a charge can come in. So this determined that charge was quantized. And I think that can be kind of like a scary term, kind of like quantum mechanics seems like really intimidating. And there is some complex stuff with it, but quantum just means quantity. And all we're saying is that charge comes in distinct quantities. So electrons are the smallest amount of charge that we can have that are moving from one object to another. You don't get the charge of half an electron to transfer onto another object. So I think we can use an analogy to mass to kind of see what this experiment is really doing. Let's say we have this bag of golf balls and we are trying to figure out the mass of the golf ball. So we take this bag, we don't know how many are in there, we get a mass and we move it off. We take another bag, we don't know how many are in there, we measure it and take it off. And we repeat this experiment multiple times. And then I get these numbers for mass, right? This is equivalent to measuring charge and getting those numbers for charge. Now to try and figure out how many I put here electrons, but how many golf balls there are, I'm looking for a common multiple within that group. And I would notice for this one that there's a common multiple of 45 grams. They all divide by that number to give you a whole value. So let's bring back up that last bag like this. And that means if I had a measurement of 315 and I divide by 45, I get a nice number of seven. And if I do this to all of my masses, I get all these nice even numbers. Then that tells me that one golf ball measures 45 grams. We can see that it comes, our mass comes in these quantities of these golf balls. You're not gonna find half of a golf ball or a quarter of one. The mass comes in these quantities of 45, just like charge comes in these quantities of electrons of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So hopefully that makes more sense of this data. And again, I didn't put exponents. This is times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And we've seen this number before. We usually just write it on our data sheet as 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So that was a big experiment to determine the charge on an electron. But now you might be thinking, well, what types of questions am I going to get relating to this? There's kind of two types of questions that you're gonna get. Both are using this to set up for Millikan's experiment. And we're gonna have an oil drop in the middle. And you're gonna get some where all the forces are balanced and it's levitating or suspended there. And there's gonna be some questions where the drop will be accelerating. For both of these questions, you're gonna start with a free body diagram where F net, the overall force, is equal to the electric force and the gravitational force. Now, they could switch the plus and the minus, so make sure you take a look at which way um, the charge is going to be moving. We can switch the plus and the minus and we can have a positive or a negative oil droplet, okay? Now, if it's all balanced, the electric force and the gravitational force are going to be equal. So then when we set up our equations, Q times the field strength equals mass times gravity. And remember from before, for finding field strength, we can figure out this if we know the volts and the plate separation was equal to our voltage divided by the plate separation, okay? If we're looking at the other situation where it's accelerating, then we're gonna have mass times acceleration, that's F net, is equal to our QE times by our mg. Okay, so let's show an example of each. This first one says an oil drop weighs 2.3 times 10 to the negative 14 newtons. So that's giving you force of gravity since it's measured in newtons and it's suspended between two plates that are 1.4 centimeters apart with a potential difference of 400 volts. How many excess electrons are on the droplet? So relating a lot to experiment, trying to find how many electrons are on there now that we do know the charge of one electron. So how we're gonna solve this first is that if it says it's suspended between two plates, this means the forces are equal, all right? They're gonna be equal up and down. So this is going to be a negatively charged sphere because it's being repelled by the bottom and pulled up to the top. That's why it says excess electrons. We could have some that are lacking electrons or electrons came off, but this one makes sense because it says excess electrons and there's a force going up with the positive here and the negative there. So because it's suspended, we know that the force up and the force down are balanced. Fe and Fg are the same. So I start with F net to sum of the forces and then write that Fe is equal to Fg. Next, let's throw in our equations here of Qe or the charge times the field strength, that's electrical force, is equal to Fg. Now it just told us Fg in the question here. We didn't have to calculate it. You could have had to take mass times gravity, but it just told us the gravitational force. So now I would just divide by field strength, but I don't know what that is. So remember we can use the voltage and the plate separation to figure out the field strength, which is volts divided by distance there. So I just replace this with Q. See so where volts divided by our plate separation. 
Now I'm just going to rearrange that to get Q. So I'm going to times by the D or the plate separation over here and divide by the volt. So I can see here in meters is my plate separation, 0.014, and then my volts over here. And when I put that into the calculator, I get 8.05 times 10 to the negative 19. And that's the charge on that oil droplet. And we want to figure out how many electrons are there. So we're going to take that total charge divided by the charge of an electron. So over here, I put 8.05 times 10 to the negative 19 divided by the charge of an electron, which we do know now, and it's on your data sheet, as 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, and you get a number of 5.031. Now, this is an important part that you don't want to write 5.031 as your answer. The reason why I want to do that is the whole purpose of this experiment was showing that charge only comes in these quantized amounts of charge, the 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So you'll never get part of an electron moving from one to the other. So our answer for electrons needs to be a whole number. You can't have five and then 0 0.031 parts of an electron that got tra transferred over. So why we got this number was due to the accuracy of our measurements and significant digits has thrown it off by a little bit. So we need to round to the nearest whole number, which is that there's five excess electrons on this droplet. That's really important to report your answer that way. Okay, so we're almost done the video. Let's just do an example of the other case where you do have an acceleration going on. So this one, a 1.5 times 10 to the negative 15 kilogram oil droplet is accelerating upwards at a rate of five or 4.5 meters per second squared between the two charged plates. The charged plates are two centimeters apart and have a potential difference of 240 volts. How many electrons has the oil droplet lost. Okay, this won't change our process too much, but this says lost instead of gained. That's because in this question, we have negative on the top and positive on the bottom. Gravity is going to be pulling it down. That means the electric force is pushing it up. So what's going to be repelled from a positive and attracted to a negative is going to be another positive charge. So how that oil droplet got positively charged is that it lost electrons. We still do the same process. How much charge does it have that's positive will tell us how many electrons have left this oil droplet. Okay, so start the same way. F net is equal to Fe plus Fg. In this case, we do have an F net. So I'm going to put mass times acceleration is Qb plus Mg. I'm trying to solve for that Q. So I'm going to uh, pull Mg over to the other side. Ma minus Mg is equal to Qe. And then again, I don't know the field strength, but I do know the volts and I know the plate separation. So I can find that with V divided by D. So I put in that formula there. Now I'm going to multiply the plate separation over and divide the volts. So I'm going to get an equation like this times D and divide by V. I'm going to plug in all these numbers. It's going to look pretty big. So you can see there's a lot of numbers in here, but hopefully you can see they match. This is the mass in those places. This is how fast it's accelerating up because that was A. And this is going to be the gravitational field strength or the acceleration of gravity. Now, it's important to note that I put this as negative. That's the direction the gravity is going to be pulling it. It's pulling it down. But overall, we are accelerating up. So here you have a overall force, a net force that's up, and a negative force that is down. So when I'm putting these together, you minus a negative, so you should get the big force to be up. You can think of this like if gravity was pulling down at five and our net force was up four, the electric force has to be nine, has to be the sum of those two forces. And then times by the plate separation right here, 0 0.02 meters, and divide by the volts to get Q, and I get a number of 1.7888 times 10 to the negative 18 coulombs. Now, again, we're not really worried about the sign from our calculation, but we know that this is positive. So how it got that charge was losing a certain number of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulomb electrons. So how many of those did we lose? We divide by the charge of an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulombs. And I get an answer of, sorry, it's kind of written over there, 11 electrons. And you'll get a decimal round to the nearest whole number for how many electrons it lost. 
Okay, so that's it for our video today on Millikan's oil drop experiment. I hope that video helped your understanding of the experiment and how to apply that concept to the questions you'll see in the practice and on tests. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.